Uh, I have a question. I'm wondering, Jun Hung, if you're hearing uh, what you are hearing about the restructuring of Kaisa in Shenzhen. Showing up, I guess they're showing up in court, and then you know there are recent articles and some report by Nomura analysts saying that it revealed a web of you know related party transactions and all that things. I mean, I think you know what I read is it's obviously you know the government, the central government doesn't really care to push the small private developers under. I mean, I just think the way it deals with it probably not very friendly to a minority shareholders who were, you know, dragged all the way down as well. Um, but, you know, um, you know, it's obviously, I mean, if you are in the, if you are a developer, I mean, what's the chance of you not, not, not corrupt, right? I mean, it's, well, so, I mean, how do you get land? How do you get, you know, all those access to resources? So, I mean, it's no doubt then, you know, all those guys have some sort of uh, questionable dealings in the behavior, but it's just who gets singled out in this case, Kaisa did. And I don't know, I don't know if Sunak is really like a seriously in a concluding a stage with, uh, in conversation with Kaisa. So, um, I mean, they offer the a purchase price, but then it turned out that Kaiser seems like uh, owns a lot more debt than than it, it claimed to be, or like people um, expected um, at the beginning. So uh, this all started when the uh, party people in Shenzhen realized that a local police chief in Shenzhen, who was on an annual salary of less than twelve thousand dollars, owed forty-two properties. So they began to suspect that that was a very strange situation, that there was a lot of corruption involved. And since the properties were all built by Kaisa, they thought that there was perhaps a link between this police chief and the Kaisa. So then the local authorities in Shenzhen banned Kaisa from selling more properties in that district of Shenzhen. That caused the bankruptcy of Kaisa. So it's an incredibly complicated situation. And I think even if you can understand in detail what happened in this murky Kaisa case, that doesn't help you a hell of a lot to understand the broader property market issues in China. Well, I mean, but the thing is, I mean, so Kaisa did and Kaisa is caught. So I mean, what are you describing in Shenzhen market? I mean, it's so easy to envision it happened anywhere uh, in Shanghai, in Nanjing, in Chongqing, anywhere in smaller cities, particularly smaller cities. So yeah, the highly levered guys with, you know, lots of land bank in smaller cities, and uh, you know, they are more prone to be, a, to be a singled out and to be investigated and uh, to, to be found, you know, with wrongdoings. Yes, I mean, I think it's interesting that uh, once the company got into trouble, uh, it's uh, a lot of off balance sheet liabilities turned up that people didn't previously know about and so forth and so on. But that, that's a fairly standard um, kind of story. I think it's not good from the point of view of the uh, reliability of audited financials in China. And I don't think the foreign bondholders have much prospect of recovery. One of the three owners of Kaisa, one of the Kwok brothers bailed out, I understand. They left Hong Kong and this somewhere. Now, th this is a very murky case, and it is interesting, and it is indicative of the chaotic nature of many of the markets in China, but I don't think it's worth spending a lot of time trying to find out uh, all the details, because mm. even if you find out all the details, you still don't have the broader picture. Um, Peter, I wonder if you have any uh, insights on um, a similar situation, but slightly different, Mingshan Bank. Uh, the CEO being taken out and investigated, and uh, we uh, we spoke with some people within Mingshan Bank. They were saying like all the non-cash business, so the basic uh, you know banking businesses, uh, including the um, excluding the basic banking business such as cash and the cash management, um, the financial derivatives and the um, uh, you know interbank activities and uh, bank, uh, 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 bank bill, bank notes, trading, those are all told to be suspended. Um, so like, do you have any uh, insight on like why, why the law, I mean, I guess not why, but like, what would be the likely outcome in Bingshan being the, one of the largest non-SOE bank? Yeah, I, I think you, you just summed about up what I had heard about the case, I have no inside knowledge in the Minxing. 
it, it's, it's an interesting case and it's probably mostly related to the anti-corruption drive and not to financial sector issues. Um, but it's important because Minsheng in the meantime has become a sizable bank. It started as a very small bank when the IFC put 5% in it in 93 or 94. Now it's a sizable bank even by international standards. But I, I, I don't really have any insights, no. So what do you think, do you think that they would, uh, so is it just going to be like a top uh, executives uh, turn around or not turn around, but just like reshuffling or it's going to impact the bank's uh, business and earnings kind of, you know, for a while? Yeah, my, my guess is that the, uh, the, the party has limited control over Minsheng because Minsheng is one of the few banks that has substantial uh, non-party shareholding. It's, it's sometimes referred to as China, China's first private bank. It was started in the mid-90s, as you know, with substantial IFC support. But I, I honestly don't know what's going on. It's, it's uh, all within the camp of Mr. Wang Chisan. And then the Kaiser, on the Kaiser deal, Peter, would you say that we are just, I mean, that, is it indicative of perhaps the anti-corruption now getting to the property market? Well, yeah, I, I, think, I think the Kaiser case to the under, to the, the, Kaiser is not a big company. Let's make, make that clear. Yeah. It's a listed company in Hong Kong, but it's not one of the big developers. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is primarily a corruption case and not a property market case. They went bankrupt because they were banned from selling property in a large part of Shenzhen after the local party authorities had found out that a, the local police chief had acquired properties from Kaiser, presumably. Mm -hmm. 